So uh, let's just walk through the top five predictions for 2014. Um, so I think probably one of the first things that, that we're going to see in 2014 is more and more collaboration going on, on really on both sides of the fence. Uh, you know, we've certainly seen organized criminals in the last few years start to share and function together. And I think what we've really seen, certainly now in the last year or so, is organizations actually starting to collaborate together as well to be able to share information about actually what's happened to them. And the goal of that is really then to be able to focus in on what are the big impactful attacks and how do we collaborate together with law enforcement to, uh, to make sure that we get those most key attacks shut down. Um, the second uh, prediction that, that I think we're going to see really in 2014 is just those attacks getting more and more personal. And, and I think there's a really kind of simple kind of uh, analogy here, which is I can either take a little bit from everybody that has the same thing, or I kind of figure out, uh, you know, what is it that you have in your organization that makes you really profitable and successful? And I go for that IP. And it could be an engine design, it could be customer records, it could be, it could be just about anything. But you think, you're just taking that little bit of time to do the reconnaissance, then the reward that's, that's sort of achievable from that is so much greater. Now the challenge for us is that means the attack gets more and more personal. So we have to get better and better at doing our own discovery to see that and prevent it. Now the next prediction really very much ties into that. So if attacks are going to get more and more personalized, I think what we're going to see is, well, how do they achieve that? So I think we're going to see more and more watering hole attacks. A watering hole attack basically means um, I do some reconnaissance. Uh, I, I monitor that person and I see where do they go? Where do they go read the news every morning? Where do they go for specific information to their job? And then I put the attack in their way. So they, they literally is almost, so they go for a drink of water, so they kind of get poisoned by the content maybe is a, is a nice analogy. The other half of that is, uh, you know, how do I even do that discovery? So I think we'll see more and more uh, linking into people's social media profiles, um, again, to understand their, their habits, what's of interest to them. So for example, if I send them a, a, a carefully crafted email, a spear phishing email, it's got content in there that that person's going to expect and therefore be likely to click on. And I think there's a misnomer often that we, um, we mistake trust for a site that we've been to regularly or to somebody we've communicated to regularly as, as them having good security practice and, and safe to communicate with. And in many ways, that trust just means we've been there frequently, but it doesn't guarantee the security behind that communication or that place that I visit. It's kind of funny, all of these trends uh, kind of daisy chain together a little bit. So uh, the, the next one is the mobility angle. And, and, and mobility we've talked about for many years, it feels like now. But I think there's a couple of aspects that are, that are really starting to change. I mean, we're seeing more volume of, of mobile malware. But again, you have to think, as criminals and organized attacks focus on high value information, the question is, where is that information? And, and typically, maybe bits of it on smart devices, but not consistently. But if I kind of go back to how do I personalize the attack, we think, how do we communicate online real time? And the simple answer is our smartphones. More and more, whether that's to talk on social media, uh, or whether to check for content, um, you know, this is how we do our day-to-day -day in exchange. And, and the challenge in many ways is it's kind of that quick, short burst of information. And, and that creates us two problems. Sometimes we don't look so carefully. So again, I, I can be probably more easily socially engineered on there because it's quick back and forth. And, and two, I'm a little bit more trusting. We don't see smartphones as computers. We just see them as a phone with extras. So again, it's probably a, an easier way almost to trick the user into clicking on something. You know, we've had a lot of years of education going, don't click, don't click, but we don't see the phone in the same way. So I think the smartphone is almost now that, almost the precursive cycle into that targeted attack. It's how I understand you and how I instigate the process. Now the final uh, prediction for 2014 is, um, is, is one that may seem a little strange, destruction. Um, and, and so really there's two parts to this. We have seen certainly in the, in the last year a bit of a resurgence of distributed denial of service attacks taking away control. And so if I can put an attack in that basically wipes your system, now I can start to ransom you. Or if I have maybe a different method uh, or motive, I should say, political or religious, this is how I, I would go about bringing that environment down. But I think more and more, 
as we see these high-scale attacks, attacks at one or a few organizations where they take high-value information, what happens is now they become visible on the radar. And so what you start to see is better forensics to actually uh, understand who it was, how they got in, and what they tried to take away. And, and when, you, when you move up on that kind of visibility radar, that's kind of the worst thing for the criminal. So I think what we're going to see more and more now is the, the organized attacker almost detonate as they kind of leave that virtual environment to wipe it clean of, of any evidence. They, they broke in, they took the time, they took the information they wanted, and now they want to make sure there's no way you can actually track back to what they're doing. And that's going to be key then for us to almost be able to keep that kind of almost like time-sliced ongoing intelligence so if that detonation point of the wipe occurs, we don't lose all of that forensic insight as to what was going on.